everyone, this is Eduardo. Today our guest is Natsuki Kikuya. She's a sake sommelier who lives in London and also runs the Sake Museum of London. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to know what motivated you to immerse yourself in the world of sake? Um, so sake is a Japanese national drink and I happen to be a granddaughter of the sake green family. Oh, uh, okay. It's being, uh, it's being on in Akita Prefecture in mm -hmm. Japan for 365 years. <laughs> More than 300 years? Wow. Yes, but it was quite recent um, since I started to be into sake. Mm -hmm. uh, when, I, when I was little, child food to adolescence, I never thought of um, I'll take over the business or so I'll ever be interested in sake. Mm -hmm. And sake was such a old people drink. Yeah, old I drink. understand. I feel like grandparents yes. think, right? Not yes. like young people think. All my friends were drinking cocktails or beers or uh -huh. no, anything else but sake. But sake. <laughs> to me, it wasn't really interesting. And But uh, several years ago, uh, my when I was working the previous job in mm -hmm. Japan, in Tokyo, I my grandfather got to be ill, oh. quite heavily ill. Uh -huh. And that made me think, started to think about what I can do for him, you know, who loved me for you know, long, as long as I've been living in this world. And sake was the only thing, was, sake was the best thing that I thought of to, to, yeah. uh, to continue to the back, family yeah. business, right? Exactly. Family legacy. Yes, of. yes. But you know, at the beginning, there was more like responsibility. And uh -huh. more and more I learned about it, I started to feel, oh, it's such a you know, fascinating world. It's very, very, it's kind of one bottle that filled with Japan. It's, it's a uh -huh. really interesting Yeah, it's a very long tradition, right? Mm. I know that before going to UK, you went to America for a few years. So, would you tell us how did you overcome the language barrier and cultural differences? Uh, my first five years in the United States, I, you know, I, I had to experience what other students have experienced with the language barriers. Mm -hmm. Have to make friends, have to learn slangs, how to yeah. <laughs> socialize with a younger, you know, American crowds. Um, that was quite uh, struggling at the first mm -hmm. six months or so, but I got used to it because I was young enough to 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 be flexible, yes. to adapt to a new culture. Exactly. But when I decided to work in the United Kingdom um, in London, was on the other side of the world, uh -huh. it was quite dif different and difficult at the same time because not only the language barriers but the cultural barriers of uh, of the. Uh, so, uh, community that mm -hmm. I'm belonging to to introduce sake to British crowd was very difficult or different from just being friends with American people or just to be nice or study mm -hmm. as a student. So you have to get used to like a more professional scene in the UK? Yeah, first of all, I had to, because as a sommelier, um, you know, I, I, I very first job I started as a sake sommelier, mm -hmm. which I work uh, within a restaurant. As a sommelier, like a wine sommelier, yes. you introduce what sake is, you recommend the customer which sake would go well with the food, you know, talk about the breweries, talk about the visions, mm -hmm. you know, all these things I had to talk in English uh, to be understood in the British uh, wine drinkers. Okay, so, I suppose you, you had to change your language, like to make it very formal. And not so foreign for the British people? Yes, um, it, first of all, it was uh, about accent. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the strong American accent that it had, uh, had to be changed a little bit for the British crowd. But at the same time, um, you know, when you're thinking about the sake, it's, it's a very authentic Japanese drink. And mm -hmm. uh, to be understood to, for the British people, I had to translate into the context that is similar to wine. You know, for example, I have to use the Use the explanation uh, to talk about what sake as a wine, you know, talking about the Grand Cru or Premier Cru or, you know, the, um, the legions and everything. Uh, so to be able to do that, I had to understand understand what wine is. First yeah, time. yeah, because if you just tell them about sake, they don't know about it. So yes. you just find like some points, like common points, common ground mm. between wine and sake, right? Yes, exactly. Sounds hard yeah. to study. And the second point was uh, I had to understand what the people are normally eating in uh -huh. the kingdom uh, because sake has so much to do with the food culture in Japan. Um, you can talk about, oh, this sake would go well with, uh, let's say, uh, uh, like, a, uh, like very Japanese authentic cuisines. So you can mm -hmm. talk about sashimi or sushi, but nobody would understand if I say, 
um, this is very good with uh, you know like kind of guts of, of the some fish or <laughs> the cod roll or things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to completely understand what people are normally eating mm -hmm. um, to match with the sake, you know. So it's it's a very different to how I understand the sake in Japan or how I understand uh, British culture. Mm -hmm. So that was the quite hardest part part for me. Now about the UK, I would like to know what are the benefits of working in the United Kingdom. Yes, when I, you know, a lot of sake breweries try to introduce their sake overseas. Uh, everybody goes to the United States. The United States is the biggest market for the sake uh -huh. importing, um, as well as the all these Asian countries, including the Southeast Asia, like Singapore, or Thai, Thailand, that it's growing mm -hmm. of the Japanese uh, food cultures. Yeah, that's um, true. But when you're thinking about the food culture history, um, you know, a lot of people think of, okay, uh, wine culture, France, you know, France is yeah. the center of the food, um, all this, you know, choc choc chocolate or you know, French cuisine, everything has traditions and, you know, the sake has to be understood in French culture or, you know, the Western culture equals to French. Um, but when it comes to uh, wine culture, um, it's a French wine was evaluated and um, promoted through the British government, oh. which mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really know much about this. Yeah, yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I would have never expected that. <laughs> mm, because, you know, of course the United Kingdom had a you know, long, long period of time to, to conquer the world, mm -hmm. and uh, France was under the United Kingdom for a while. And during this time, they're investing the French winemakers to create the good wines, mm -hmm. and uh, they're drinking you know, and evaluating the wine, and started to introduce exporting the French wines to overseas. Uh -huh. um, so knowing that, uh, if you want to be evaluated, if you want the sake to be evaluated in uh, Europe, uh, United Kingdom is actually uh, the center of oh, the Oh, so culture. that's the best starting place Yes, to so promote right. your product in Europe, all over Europe. In, in London. In London? Yes, and um, also London is a, is a center of the culture uh, mm -hmm. where all these rich people, all these rich uh, mm -hmm. tourists visit and do uh, shopping in, yeah. in London. So they come to London, they shop a lot and eat the Japanese cuisine and drink sake and coming back to their own, uh, own countries. So in this way, they are a uh, lo uh, London player role to be a center of the food culture mm -hmm. at the same time. Like a lot of people think, oh, England doesn't have a good food. You know, everybody thinks, oh, British food is very bad. You don't mm -hmm. even have traditional food anyway. <laughs> um, but because of this culture coming from the maybe maybe less quality uh, qualified food or mm -hmm. less good, uh, you know, uh, worse food than that, uh, any other cultures, we evolved the food culture by taking in the different food cultures from our own world. And um, London itself is a very cosmopolitan, as I explained earlier. There is an uprising demand for Japanese culinary culture across the globe. However, in Japan, the consumption of traditional food is decreasing. What do you think is needed to change the current state? I cannot stop this movement, I think, because the, all these globalizations and um, mm -hmm. we have to live in, in the harmonizing world. We have to harmonize with the modern Japan culture. Yes. That's all this new culture is coming in. And, uh, you know this news that the Japanese food, the washoku, became a national intangible heritage. Yeah, yeah, by UNESCO? Yes, um, by UNESCO. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, like uh, this year. So yeah, it's, it's together with French food or maybe Mexican food? And kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> kimchi as well? Yes. So I think mean, it's a great news that Japanese people start to realize what we are missing and what we have to protect. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you know, what I always question what is authentic, authenticity, or authentic Japanese food means. Yeah. Um, because if you come back to the maybe hundred years ago, you know what my grandfather, grandparents are eating. I don't think we can really feed ourselves anymore. Um, I mean, we don't have you know the production of the, of the food in, anyway for mm -hmm. to feed all these Japanese people to make a traditional food. Um, to harmonize the change of Japan, the whole Japanese culture. Um, and also the Japanese diet. Yeah. Uh, I think we have to balance. Is always a keyword. I think mm -hmm. balance. Mm, like something you have to keep, something you have to be flexible. Mm -hmm. So I think that applies a lot for the sake culture as well. You know, sake has to be to be drunk in a certain way. When my grandparents era, but 
people today cannot drink sake in the same way. Okay. Same as you know, if I introduce the, if I want to introduce the sake to Western people, they cannot drink the same way as Japanese people. Mm -hmm. So I have to make it flexible. Being authentic is not the only way to to keep the Japanese food culture. Mm -hmm. So you know that if you see soy sauce, show you. Yeah. Um, in the United Kingdom, everybody uses it, you know, and uh, even young people doesn't know that's Japanese. They use <laughs> the soy sauce, saying like, oh, soy, soy, and they put on anything else, you know, what they're eating every day. And then if they say like, oh, this is Japanese, do you know that? They're like, really? <laughs> <laughs> so they, you know, I, I think that's the good, I wouldn't say good example, but that's the very globalized today, you mm -hmm. know, the people, um, appreciate and start using products without thinking, you know, without being authentic. Maybe some people appreciate Japanese food as a authentic authenticity or mm -hmm. and have Japanese culture. Yeah, like aiseki food, yes. or this very traditional mm. old style food, right? Mm. So, but most of the people, you know, appreciate soy sauce just for the flavor and don't even think of it that it's <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> yeah. And um, if you thinking about um, introducing Japanese food or introducing sake to the um, rest of the world, mm -hmm. we don't always have to be, uh, oh, it has to be this way, or it has to be that way, and it has to be eaten by chopstick, or it has to be this way, you know. Mm -hmm. You have got to be ready mm -hmm. to adapt to Adapted their taste, to, the... to their customs, to their cuisine as well. <laughs> yes, right? that's what I, what I believe. Last, I would like you to give a message to people who want to study or work abroad. I'm not sure if I'm I have a, I, I'm in a position to, to say this kind of to, a message to people, but uh -huh. if I wanted to tell myself, uh, who is five, six years ago, doesn't know anything about sake, I would say, um, I think it's always nice wherever you go to learn about the culture in that country. Mm -hmm. um, language is always important um, to make, make the window to connect to the people in the local area, but um, to completely understand, fully understand the people there and culture there and to immerse yourself in your uh, in, in that culture as a working person or a study studying person mm -hmm. um, it's always important to under, try to understand try to listen to the to the people what they're talking as i said uh, earlier you know i had to understand what the british people were eating every <laughs> single day and yeah. uh, that involved me going to the supermarket every single day to understand to see all the shelves and Everybody's, you know, women what they are buying for the dinner, mm -hmm. and started realizing, oh, people, you know, it's very different how they eat, and uh, also watching carefully in you know, the people in the Japanese restaurant, and then, you know, some of the people drink miso soup at the very, very end, uh, beginning, not not like the end how Japanese <laughs> people do. That was, um, you know, quite um, all these small bits of things really make me understand the people how they uh, create their way of thinking for the mm -hmm. food and the culture itself and that helped me a lot to talk about the food and sake. Okay, so once again, thank you very much for coming today. It was great hearing your experiences. You have a unique way of thinking because of not having like experienced one cultural shock only, but two, <laughs> from Japan to America and then from America to the UK. It's really interesting. So, well, best wishes from now on. Thank you very much for coming. Thank See you next time. Uh -huh. um, I used to hate rice or hate Japanese food and I was all about eating a western cuisine in a restaurant or refusing my mom's food <laughs> and try to eat a frozen food or something, frozen yeah. pizza or something like so that. So yourself, you were avoiding also traditional Japanese yes, food? Yes, I was the worst high school student like that, <laughs> <laughs> like anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. trying and, to get uh, rebel, go, mm -hmm. go against the rules, yes, the traditional like, things, right? Exactly. And uh, first, first I moved to the United States. I started missing my mom's food a lot, uh -huh. missing rice a lot, yeah. uh, missing all this dashi and all this, you know, 
the food culture mm -hmm. that we are missing. And uh, just like to realize, wow, how amazing the Thai Japanese food culture is.